Last week, I was invited to the Adobe Max conference as a part of their insider group. I had a front row seat to some of the new sneak peeks and features that are being implemented into Adobe software. Some of the stuff I saw on stage seemed more like science fiction than just an upgrade in technology. This actually feels like a generational advancement in the space, so I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Here is the 10 new sneak peeks that Adobe unveiled. So number one, the thing that I was excited for most, generative fill for video, and I was actually very surprised that they announced this. We were in a group that specifically asked this question to the CTO, and I'm pretty sure they kind of just said, oh, it's hard to do this. But whenever they did the sneak peek presentation, here we go. Project fast fill. You just draw a mask over what you want to fill. You click generative fill. If you leave it blank, I'm guessing it's like Photoshop. You just let it run. What more can you say? I thought that the generative fill tool in Photoshop was probably the biggest game changing tool that they implemented. Now we're getting that for video. How is this going to change what we're doing. I think it's going to make things a lot easier, make things a lot faster. If you pay attention to the AI generated tie here, you can see it actually changes with the lighting of the video, which is mind blowing. I think that we can use this tool to pull off so many different things that would have otherwise been tough to pull off with compositing and tracking actual insane. And that's going to set the tone for a lot of these other ones. A lot of these are powered by Adobe Firefly AI. So next up we have project draw and delight. And I'll be honest, this is similar to a lot of other AI tools that I've seen. Adobe is essentially just planning their flag. So for this one here, it allows you to sketch what you'd like. You can set up the composition. You can type in the generative bar what you want and bam, you get these insanely good mockups. It even works with colors. You can just draw a little bit of color where you want it. Now, here's where this AI differs from other AI doing a similar thing. They're building these branches and connecting a lot of this generative AI to softwares like Adobe Illustrator. So this is great for designers. You can just type in what you want, draw a little sketch to get the posing of everything, and then you can take everything that you made here port it into Illustrator. You have everything as a vector and you can change it how you want. So that's draw and delight. Number three is Project Neo. And this one's really cool. This is essentially a hybrid 3D software. And I say hybrid because it's a 3D software with illustrators in mind. Again, kind of playing to Adobe Illustrator users, graphic designers, instead of having to do these 3D perspectives from hand on a 2D surface. Project Neo looks like an easy to use intuitive 3D software with a lot of really cool tools for just making basic shapes or changing things, duplicating things, morphing things so that you can build these sort of illustrations from that 3D perspective. And again, just like everything we talked about before, you can take this, you can port this into Illustrator. This is great for quick little 3D mockups showing your clients. Let's move on. Next, we have Project Scene Change. And this one I was actually very surprised by because it's tackling compositing and they're doing it in a very unique way. So to start off the presentation, they showed this footage here and then they showed this drone footage and they said, let's try and composite our footage into the drone footage. The way that this actually works is by using point clouds and by reading the camera location. Really cool. I was actually very surprised that they took this direction but I think that something like this can become extremely powerful. Now, the one that I thought was really cool was they have another example, a close up shot like this. Again, walking around, they're using that same technique to gather the point cloud information, to gather the camera information, and they're able to easily composite at the snap of a finger, even creating realistic shadows based off of that point cloud track. So maybe in the future, this could be implemented into After Effects. We could have more advanced ways of compositing. Extra little mind blowing feature, he was able to walk behind this cup here just based off of the depth of the camera track. Next up, this one is the most mind blowing one that I saw during the presentation. And I mean, whenever they showed this off, everyone just went nuts in the crowd. They started off by showing some fashion design elements in Photoshop. Then the person giving the presentation goes in front of everyone and does this. So we are now seeing the future of augmented reality clothing connected to our design software. You can even animate it. I mean, this is just insane. If you saw my last video, I was talking about Marvelous Designer. I talked in that video about how digital fashion is becoming a larger niche. Now we're seeing an actual physical product connected to a design software where you can control the design, you can control the animations on your clothing. This is going to be insane. Everyone in Hollywood who's obsessed with these different dresses is probably scrambling right now to try and get their hands on this, be the first one to this, because I really do think that the technology like this could be the next big thing. I thought that was insane.
Next up, we have Project Glyph Ease, and this is also very cool. Essentially, what this is, is taking your typography, writing in a sort of generative fill AI prompt, what you want the typography to look like. So in this case, he just typed baked goods. And the insane part about this is all of this text is editable. So you can essentially give things custom styles, create custom fonts. Right here, he's actually customizing the font first with these bytes through them whenever he runs it through the AI. As you can see, it applies it to all of the different font type, change the words just like that. So another example of how AI can help designers, how it can make your life easier. There's a lot of tools that are focused on production for graphic designers. And at the end, I'm gonna talk about that further. But next, let's talk about Project Posable. And this, again, I've seen this before with other AI softwares. So here is Adobe's take on AI posing. You can select objects and allow the software to automatically pose a character to an object, like for example, sitting in a chair. You can also load in a picture of a pose and the AI will pose that character following the image as the input. I think that AI assisted animation could be one of the most useful innovations on this list. We've already seen something similar coming out with Cascador, if you've heard of that software. Animating and posing characters is hard, so using easy photo to pose inputs like this is great. I'm really excited to see where this goes next. In terms of current use case, you can generate with Firefly based on the pose and the camera you set up, so you can essentially storyboard shot for shot with exact posing of your actors, which is extremely useful. Next up, we have Project Res Up, and it is exactly what it sounds like, just a super crisp resolution upscaler. 300 to 200 resolution bumped up to 1200 by 800. I was really blown away whenever they showed this vintage footage here from this movie back in the day. And upscaled, it's just insane to see these old style actors in 4K. It looks great. And I think if you're working on a project where you're sort of referencing these older vintage materials, instead of having to have them all blurry and low resolution, you could use something like this to really blow people away. Next, we have Project Dub Dub Dub. And I think that this one has a ton of use case moving into the future, especially for those of you watching YouTube videos. This allows you to dub audio, dub voice, and dub video. So you can place in your audio or your video file, select your languages, and the output will speak in those languages with the exact presentator's voice. So in the future, instead of having to rely on captions or having that language gap, you can be listening to what I'm saying in your native language. I know I talk fast, so a lot of you are probably excited about that. It's cool to see we're having these sort of features popping up. And I also think it's great from a content perspective. I'm going to be able to get tools like this where I can reach a wider audience by being able to translate and things like that. You're already seeing people like Mr. Beast doing that with his second channels. Now, next up, we have Project Stardust, and I think this is sort of the flagship product that they wanted to show. Project Stardust, essentially, you just click on what you want to move, you move it around, it composites and fills everything in all for you. And this is very powerful. And I think this is targeted towards newer graphic designers or photographers, people who don't want to go down and learn complex softwares to try and composite, generative fill. They just want to click here, put it there, and it works. I think Adobe's really gonna push something like this and it really just shows the power of generative fill and what it can do. I mean, you can change colors, you can remove people that have their faces or body covered by other people or objects, which is just insane. I mean, the level of detail needed to be able to do that just goes to show a lot. So that is Project Stardust. And then lastly, we have Project See-Through, which essentially is great for photographers by removing reflections. So you can click remove reflections, it removes reflections. I'm not much of a photographer. I don't know if that's a large issue. Many of you may be super excited by this. The results are stunning. I think it's more exciting to see that technology of this caliber exists. Instead of thinking of it as, oh, now we don't have reflections, we can think of it as, what can this technology do next to doctor our pictures, our videos, goes further. Obviously, AI is just showing stunning results. So completely mind blown by a lot of these. I was on my edge of my seat for a lot of these presentations just because I know how much this is going to help people like me, people like you, people who have never even used a computer to do something like this. It's making everyone's life easier. And a big thing I want to talk about here is the difference between creating art and producing art. And this is something that we talked about, and it's a very touchy subject. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt because I may be butchering the explanation of it. But the way it seemed to me, it seemed that Adobe is trying to make the life of graphic designers, video editors easier 
by taking the toll off of these everyday projects that they're producing for their job. I don't think we're moving towards a future of having our jobs completely replaced by tools like this. I think that if you put these tools in the hands of people who know how to do these things, who can think creatively, who've been doing this for years, they're going to be able to create amazing things. And if you put these tools in the hands of people who really need them to cut those deadlines, to be able to spend time with their family or just not be in front of a computer 24 seven doing mundane tasks, they're really going to appreciate it. So let me know in the comments down below. Let me know out of these 10 what you are most excited about. We were able to sit down with the higher ups at Adobe and people in the group asked them some very tough questions and what they said really surprised me. People were asking about the morality of AI, if this is going to affect people in the creative industry negatively. I expected a sort of lawyer controlled response because if you think of it from their shoes, these people are representing billions of dollars worth of shareholder money. Everything they say could be a liability when it comes to these type of responses. What we got instead was very transparent parents. They talked about how much the people on the team care for this type of stuff. They talked about how people on the team even thanked them for taking AI in the direction they did as regards to licensing, as, a, as regards to training these type of tools on Adobe stock, which they control the licensing of completely. These people have been doing this for decades now. These people are very passionate about creating the tools that everyone is using to push society forward. Every time something new comes along like AI, it's very scary because it seems like we're taking the creativity and the soul out of what we do. Instead, their approach is to tackle the production side of things, make your life easier in the little ways, give you these type of tools. Thumbs up to Adobe from that. That's my complete unbiased opinion. Trust me, if there was some negative stuff, I would be talking about it here. Again, thank you to Adobe for the invite. I picked up some of this Adobe merchandise. You can see the pillow and I got the transparency hoodie on right here. So it was a very fun event. I met some amazing people. If there's any other questions you have, comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to you guys. I also want to give a quick thank you to some of my new Patreon supporters. I'm going to put their names on the screen here. Link to my Patreon in the description if you want to check it out. As always, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.